Good morning and welcome to the Grow Omaha Show, brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and Cheer Athletics. My name is Trenton Magid. My usual tenacious co-host, Jeff Beals, uh, is proud to announce that his oldest, Jack Beals, is graduating today from Millard West, so I want to congratulate Jack Beals. Very excited. Uh, I'm joined by a couple fellas that I see almost every week and sometimes during the week in the studio today. Um, to my right, I have Brad Williams, who is my guest co-host. Brad is a regular contributor, does a lot of stuff with Grow Omaha. He is also uh, the creator of uh, the Brad Williams Grow Omaha Construction Update. Brad Williams Photography, which is amazing. If you ever need a photographer or just want to see his pictures at uh, bradwilliamsphotography.com. And you're also a principal at ENA Consulting Group. Uh, you're a busy guy, Brad. Yeah, it's hard to... Hard to get going or keep everything going. But thanks for coming back and filling yeah. in for Jeff once again. And um, also joined behind the camera, if you go to uh, our website, gromaha.com, you can see the great works of Chris Corey. Chris uh, is a uh, filmmaker, videographer, uh, website designer, and he is now a food critic. He does food reviews, movie reviews. If you go to gromaha.com, you can see Chris Corey's work. So thank you, Chris. He's off camera, ladies and gentlemen. Well, it's going to be a very informative and fun show today. We have Mark Bowder uh, joining us in the uh, next segment. Mark is the executive director of Builders of the Future program that has a mission to locate, encourage, and educate the next generation of construction trade specialists. Very important to um, pay it forward. There's a lot of companies uh, that are involved in the trades and companies that aren't involved in the trades that empower that group. So we look forward to talking to him in the next segment. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you have kids or grandkids who you want to develop tumbling and stunning skills, you should check out Cheer Athletics Omaha. Go to caomaha.com to register your athlete and join the All-Star Cheer Revolution. Located at 146 and Gold Coast Road in Papillion, Cheer Athletics Omaha competes at the highest level of all-star cheer, which differs from traditional cheer teams in that its primary purpose is competition, while school cheer involves crowd leading uh, and other school roles. So without further ado, Brad, the development news of the week, uh, sponsored by Eagle Mortgage. Eagle Mortgage Company uh, has been in business for about 32 years. They're licensed mortgage brokers serving Nebraska and Iowa. They have free consultations. They get they get you pre-approved. You need that pre-approval level letter. Have you seen signs coming up in your neighborhood with, with for sale signs? I don't even see the for sale. I just see the sold coming soon and then sold. And it was never on the market and it had multiple offers in the in one day on the market. Well, look up Holly Schneiderwind, uh, 114th and Davenport, Eagle Mortgage. Uh, they do conventional VA and FHA. They will sit down with you, explain the process, get you a pre-approval letter, and then they will shop your loan uh, to many different uh, lenders. So it's not like going to a bank where you have to fit and check all their boxes. They're going to make your loan uh, specialized. So go online at eaglemortgagecompany.com, and they will take care of you. The um, There's a lot going on in our city. This week, uh, our fabulous mayor, Gene Stothert, did the State of the City Address. It was called the State of the City Milestones, Miracles, and Momentum. And that was on May 20th. And that was her 11th State of the City. And what I really like about Jean Stothert is she's she's not looking to run for a higher office. This wasn't ever a stepping stone. She is the first mayor in Nebraska's history to, um, to get a third term. She's the first female mayor, but most importantly, she's proactive, and when we talk about a list of what's happening from a development standpoint, I think she ranks up there with the, if not the best mayor we've ever had, but certainly up there. Yeah, if you go around town right now, there is so much construction development activity going on that you know she highlights in her state of the city. She also highlighted a lot of other things that uh, you wouldn't see, you know, just visually when you're around town, you know, as far as the all the good things that came out of the bad situation with the tornado, all the uh, volunteers that uh, helped out with that, all the money that was raised, and then uh, got into some of the crime and 
how a lot of the, the crime has gone down. So there's just a lot of good things going on right now. And it wasn't just uh, Mayor Stother, but her team at the city, the planning department, um, city council. Here's just a few of the fun facts. Um, Omaha Rapid Response estimates that 14,000 volunteers showed up in the first nine days uh, after the, the tornado disaster to, to volunteer. Uh, together, the Salvation Army, Red Cross, United Way of the Midlands, and Omaha Community Foundation have raised approximately $3.5 million to help our neighbors in need. And, and, and those are things that are part of the uh, State of the City address, but it, it creates the, I hate to say it, but it's the, it's the Omaha nice. And, and that's all part of it. And, and that's why she said that uh, the website Livability is once again named Omaha as one of the best places to live in America in 2024 saying Omaha is perfect for families and young professionals. And also Forbes Home just ranked Omaha number one on its list of best places to move to in 2024, giving us a perfect score, which the second uh, city was 83%. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, to be we've, we've been up in the top of a lot of lists, but to be number one on, a, on the Forbes list was really cool to see. Yeah, the what, what's really interesting, too, is uh, you know people want to go to cities where there's not a lot of crime. There's not a lot of panhandling and things like that. And uh, what was interesting is that uh, overall crime in Omaha was down last year um, in 23, 14% lower than 22, uh, with one exception, motor vehicle theft, which is what we hear about those those Kia and the Hyundai thefts. They got to get a retrofit for and those. And that's not an Omaha problem. That's a that's national. Yeah. The number of non-fatal shootings dropped 29% in 23 from the year before. And then the fun fact that I thought was neat was the clearance rate. The, the solved crimes for making arrests um, is up. They've solved a lot more crimes. In 2023, the homicide clearance rate was 100%, which is almost unheard of, meaning that they solved all the homicides. Yeah. No wanted people for murder from last year. And that, that makes our city uh, cities, uh, pretty uh, safe, don't you think? Um. The other thing, too, that, that people, when it comes to development, people talk about uh, our taxes. And interestingly, people see their, their real estate taxes going up mainly because their assessed values are going up. And it's, it's been one of the hottest real estate markets nationwide, but, but certainly in, in Omaha. So Mayor Stother is proud and um, she's working on her 25 budget now, 2025 budget, and she's going to reduce property taxes levy again. It'll be our fifth levy reduction uh, for a total of 9%. Um, the levy is at its lowest since 2010. So even though your taxes might be going up, the levy part of it, and she realized and she mentioned that other agencies in the state, and I know Governor Pillen's been trying to reduce property taxes because, for one, if we have to have higher pr property taxes, if we have city services, the roads are good, um, it, it, it all... It all adds to a better community. And and speaking of roads, she highlighted that what was it, eight thousand lane miles have been repaved since the yeah the, that two hundred uh, that two hundred million dollar bond issue uh, was great. And um, think about all of the um, the tower cranes that are going up. And and she mentioned just a, a lot of projects, um, hotel occupancy. So so tourism is good, and and the events that we're having here and conferences. Uh, hotel occupancy in Omaha is the highest in 16 years. Uh, hotels brought in a record-breaking $271 million in revenue in 2023. Um, also, which a lot of people talk about, every time we post on the Grow Omaha uh, page and, and Facebook or on our website, affordable housing, every time there's a, an apartment project, people will get on there and they want to know about affordable housing. Well, the largest commitment from the city yet, $60 million in a partnership with Front Porch Investments, the city is creating uh, pre and to pre preserve affordable housing and make it accessible for renters and buyers. So they are. What I like about Stothard's administration is they're tackling everything, and it seems like they're making progress and everything. They're not just spreading themselves too far and wide, but, but they're making a difference, and, and there's a lot of continuity over the last 10 years. And she hired a homeless coordinator to also kind of help, you know, on the other end of the the housing issue with the getting people off the streets and into permanent housing. Absolutely. And then Creighton University is planning 
um, approximately half a billion dollars of urban core investments over the next 10 years. And, you know, they've been growing. The Med Center, the Med Center's been growing. Um, it, I can't wait. The streetcar uh, has been ordered. A lot of the cars yeah. have been ordered. The, the work's been done. Yeah, she featured a lot of fun projects that are done or in the works, you know, such as how many people have visited the parks, the Baby Bob, the Union Soccer Stadium, the Luminarium Steelhouse, uh, Tanaska Center for Engagement Arts, just project after project after project. Well, and and already she says that along the streetcar route, which isn't even in the ground yet, we'll, we'll be running on it the next few years, uh, $1.2 billion in new development is underway on that corridor. So that that's proof that we're headed in the right direction. She also threw out some something called the Tower District, which a you know, friend of Girl Maha, Jesse Calbretto, might uh, want to talk to her about that name. But it'd be interesting to see what the uh, Tower District is. Yeah, our friend Jesse has uh, over by the Water Tower at, uh, at 84th and Highway 370 Northwest uh, is a big development called the Tower District because of the water tower, but uh, we'll see how that shakes out. <laughs> yeah. um, well, that is your Development News of the Week, sponsored by Eagle Mortgage. Go to eaglemortgagecompany.com. Uh, this is Trenton Magid and Brad Williams on the Gromha Show right here on 1110 KFAB. We'll be right back in two minutes and two seconds. And welcome back to the Gromha Show, brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and Cheer Athletics. I am Trenton Maggot. Jeff Beals has the weekend off, and Brad Williams is my co-host. And we have had a very busy week at NAI, NP Dodge, and ENA Consulting, but uh, we're here with you now. And uh, I want to thank uh, our title sponsor, Dingman's Collision Center, a third generation, family owned, and they've been around since 1996 in Omaha. There's four locations, Northwest, Midtown, uh, Omaha Southwest, and Papillion. Dingman's Collision Center uh, has always chosen as the best of the best in auto body repair every year since 2005. They do uh, auto body, paint repair, and mechanical, too. Um, They use the real products, ladies and gentlemen. I've done a lot of real estate projects with, with Boyd Dingman and Travis and Andy, and not only do they do amazing work they are just nice people and you go in there you get taken care of well-trained uh technicians and staff and so couldn't recommend uh dingman's collision center any higher and uh, we appreciate their sponsorship well we are uh pleased to welcome our guest uh mark botter who um is the executive director of Builders of the Future, a program to locate, encourage, and educate the next generation of construction trade specialists. Welcome, Mark. Uh, Thank you for having me. Uh, Ted Grace was kind enough to introduce us to you and and your organization. I know it it means a lot to him as well. Um, Give us a a quick overview of the Builders of the Future program. Okay. um, Basically, Ted Grace was the co-founder of Builders of the Future, along with Steve Skidmore and a few more members of MOBA. Uh, it started in 1993, and if you remember, if you went went to the Street of Dreams, it was a playhouse project. So they had themes each year. The first couple of years, it ran as um, the home builders had their carpenters and finished carpenters build a tiny playhouse. I and remember they, those. Yeah, and they did that for two years, and they found out there was a little issue trying to get when people bought them or did the raffle, how to get those into the backyards of people that bought them. So then they changed the name to Builders of the Future in 1995, a couple of years later, and they moved that task to the high schools. So schools were given money and lumber and materials to build different themes of houses, and they were moved out of the, the industrial labs and then taken to Street of Dreams and then sold. And that's kind of how it evolved. In 2001, they incorporated and became a, a, the, got a nonprofit, the Builder Foundation, and that was to help them do scholarships for the trades. So they were able to... Uh, fund that a little bit easier if they did that from MOBA. So you gave us an interesting statistic. For every tradesperson that retires, how many are entering into yeah. the building trades? For every five in, uh, trade people retiring, there's only two joining and going into the trades. And that's why we have such a deficit in the trades right now. So that's not very sustainable numbers right there. Yeah. How do you <clears throat> how do you get teenagers interested in the program and decide where they want to go into a trade? Uh, probably the biggest thing for us is to have the schools take on these big, bigger projects. Um, 
you can talk all you want to kids about different things, but if you sit there and just listen, they don't get they don't get it. But if you get them to build things bigger than a bread box, uh, if you get them to build dog houses, sheds, ten by ten, ten by twelve sheds, garages, fences, have them go out and do decks or basements, that's when they start to rub elbows with maybe a plumber or electrician, and they got to see or a carpenter and say, hey, this is what they do for a living. And that helps them figure out what they want to do. And you were you were mentioned to us before the show that you have, you do have bigger projects these days. So tell us about the the big one that you're working on now. Yeah, a couple of years ago we wrote a grant, and I was probably, I'm a half, a glass half full kind of person. I looked at it and I said we had uh, DC West John Brockhouse had somebody come to them and ask him if he would build a house. Well, that was right during COVID. Didn't quite go as well as we wanted. But then we said, okay, let's see if we can get other schools to do it. If you remember back in the day, 20, 30 years ago, uh, Benson High School built houses. Uh, there was a school in I- I- Iowa, Council Bluffs did. Fremont built houses. So we thought, okay, let's try this again. So we wrote a grant. One of the major foundations around Omaha gave us $200,000 to get five school districts to try to start building houses. That uh, each school would get 10000 for tools, 10000 for scaffolding, and $20,000 to pour a pad to build it on at the school site. And then once it's built at the school, then it's moved to a site and finished by a general contractor. The reason is, is the travel time, the t- uh, lost of loading the kids in a bus, loading the tools, get them to the job site, traveling back and forth and unloading everything again and unloading the kids. And all the liability goes with that makes it easier to just build it at the school. Build at the school and then you can mo- pour a foundation somewhere. And actually it's, it's, it's skinny enough that you can put it 26 feet, you can get it on the streets. Yeah, and certain cities say we have never done this before. Yeah, but there is houses moved everywhere in, in the country and it's in the city. But the, we made them 26 feet wide by uh, 46 or 45. They can be a little longer. They just can't be any wider than 26. Okay. Builders of the Future program, how can parents get in touch with you, learn more about it, and how can people contribute? Um, they can just call me. My number is 402-290-2235. They can email, email me at nebuildersofthefuture dot, or at gmail.com. Say or that they, again. It's nebuildersofthefuture at gmail.com. Um, they can also go to our website. It's just nethebuilderfoundation.org. And they can just send us emails, phone calls. Um, I'm on the road a lot driving between schools. So it's a, it's a not-for-profit. How, how are you funded? We're funded all by grants and donations. Uh, our biggest, a lot of our big dona- uh, donors are uh, uh, Omaha Boulder Realtors, the, the, the lumber yards like Builder Supply, Miller Lumber, uh, Christensen Lumber, uh, A&E, uh, like Brad here uh, works for. A lot of these companies, uh, 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 Turner Construction, um, they just walk in concrete. They donate money every year to help fund all these projects for these schools. You were telling us that it's not only a problem getting kids into the trades, but now you're having this problem getting the teachers to teach the trades. Yeah, there's a big shortage of teachers in Nebraska for industrial trades. Um, Right now, I think there's about 10 teachers retiring every year in Nebraska for the trades. They're only producing approximately four teachers to fill those spots. So some schools have actually had to find custodians or a math teacher or a science teacher that has a little bit of background to come in and teach those classes. So the, the skill gap, even on the teacher end, is starting to, to hit us. So we're at a unique time and when it comes to education. And um, a, lot of, a, a lot of people are saying, I want to learn a trade. I don't want, or I don't want to send my kids to these colleges across the country. It, it's very expensive. They're not learning what they used to learn. And Give us an idea of the kind of money that being trained in, in, in the construction industry, um, kids that maybe want to go to a trade school or go to college to learn about teaching in the trades, what kind of money are we talking about for, for some of these trades? So, well, if you if you start with a carpenter, they're going to probably make 25 to 30 or to $35 an hour. If you get in some of the HVAC people, they're on the higher end, they could make $50 an hour if they're at the commercial side. Um, it's unbelievable the, the salaries that some of these people can make now compared to what they were 20 years ago. And they don't have a bunch of school debt. Right. Um, are there programs that, that you guys help fund that, that takes away the cost of, of, the, of the education? Yeah, we have 
we try to get scholarships for kids, anybody that wants to go to Metro. We also have a scholarship for anybody that wants to go to Wayne State. Uh, we give $10,000 to Wayne State to divide up into four scholarships. And um, we're just trying to get more kids because, like I said, only four are graduating each year with an in- industrial teaching degree. We're hoping to get that. Even to break even, you need about eight or ten. And we're hoping that that can grow into where we can get maybe 10 or 12 so we have a, a better quality of st- uh, teachers out in the, in the field. The, um, what, a, what a great program. Give us that website again. It's the website? Yeah. I have to look down. N-E. N-E, the builderfoundation.org. Okay, very good. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Mark Bowder, Executive Director of Builders of the Future, uh, a great program, and I encourage you all to, to look it up and get involved, whether you have a, a student that is looking to do something like that, whether you um, want to contribute uh, our success in the future of Omaha for the, for the built environment uh, depends on programs like this. So, Mark, thank you for coming on to the Grow Omaha Show. Thank you for having us. And we appreciate it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, when we come back, we're going to have the uh, Noddle uh, Development Spotlight. And we are going to talk about a lot of projects that Brad Williams has um, has has put into the this month's construction update. So you're listening to Brad Williams and Trent Maggot right here on 1110 KFAB. We'll be right back. And welcome back to the Grow Omaha Show, brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and Cheer Athletics Omaha. I am Trenton Maggot. Jeff Beals has the weekend off, but he'll be here next week. And Brad Williams is joining me in the studio. And Brad is a principal at ENA Consulting Group, engineering firm. He is bradwilliamsphotography.com. Beers with Brad. We didn't mention that at the start of the show. It's a, it's a podcast that's pretty fun. It's a photography podcast with beer in it. Oh, with beer in it. Okay, yeah. we'll call that. Um, and also, uh, he's an integral part of uh, Grow Omaha. The um, Noddle Development uh, Spotlight... Uh, is a feature that we do here. And uh, you know Noddle Development as one of the premier developer, developers in the Midwest. You think of Exarbon Village, Valmont Headquarters, the River's Edge, and Council Bluffs. And back in the day, they built First National Business Park and even Commercial Federal Business Park, which became, um, now it's BMO or yeah. whatever, they call, whatever they call it. But, Bank of uh, the West in between. Yep, and, and they're, they're, they're a busy developer. And uh, you can find them at noddlecompanies.com. Um, well, uh, if you haven't been there lately, go check out the 100, 108,000 square foot um, hybrid timber building down at 1501 Mike Fahey Drive, 15th and Mike Fahey Drive. Uh, I can announce that the tenant finally, there's a new um, fitness facility. It's called Fly Fitness Studio, and it will occupy part of the first floor. And uh, this is the first one in Omaha. There's a couple in Lincoln. There's two in Fargo, North North Dakota, and one in uh, Loveland, Colorado. So that building is taking shape. It's part of the Builders District, and it's pretty neat. And switching to Exarbon Village, if you're looking for a few new restaurants and entertainment this weekend, uh, Tiny's Pizza is now open in the inner rail at Exarbon Village. Exarbon Village Farmer's Market uh, is now every Sunday through uh, October 13th. The market will take place from 9 a.m., to 1 p.m. in Exarvin Village at 67th and Mercy Road. Uh, and if you haven't, uh, if you didn't get a chance, Brad, to go to Lemon Fresh Day last night, uh, there's more live music at Sunny's, which is that Airstream trailer right next to HDR. They have cocktails, uh, all kinds of uh, fun treats. And uh, tonight, starting at 8 p.m., you can join, you can you can jam out with DJ Skyscraper. That's one of your all favorites, right. I think. And uh, tomorrow will be the very talented Chris Saab from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Sunday. And that's your Real Estate Development Spotlight brought to you by Noddle Companies. So I've never heard of DJ Skyscraper, but I will recommend Lemon Fresh Day. They are a fun band. Yeah, to go great off. cover. I've yeah. loved them for decades. They've and, been around Omaha and, for a long time, and they and, do an yeah. awesome job. But Skyscraper fits in well with the theme of our show. It does, so, it does. So, so we like that. So go to Noddle Companies. Uh, dot com and and check out what they can do for you well brad one of the things i've always admired about you and and you and i've known each other for 20 something years we both went to westside high school but to watch you grow in the industry 
not just working at ENA Consulting Group and becoming a partner there, but Brad Williams Photography and, and things you do for major corporations and organizations in Omaha, your your print photography, your videos, your your drone. Uh, no drones. No drones? Helicopter. Oh, helicopter, yes. Yeah. You are the you I are like the drone. to be in you the are, air. You like to be in the drone. <laughs> yes. But helicopter work. And but but a couple of years ago, you came up with the Brad Williams Grow Omaha construction update brought to you by Leader Construction. And since then, if you go to growomaha.com and you look up the construction updates, you can see a great history and, and see plenty of tower cranes. What's going on? And what I thought would be neat is in this segment is to feature some of those projects. And let's start with uh, the feature project by Leader Construction. Yeah, so Leader Construction, uh, awesome local builder. They have been sponsoring the Gromaha Construction Update for over a year now. And every month we feature one of their projects. We've done everything from uh, H&H Kia out there, uh, Steel Ridge, to um, apartment develop on 39th and Dodge. Well, this month we featured they're building a brand new facility for the Boys and Girls Club, uh, the Count, uh, Carter Lake location. Um, it's you don't see it, but if you're if you're at Epley, you're real close. It's right across the lake behind the trees, um, and they're building uh, a, a great facility that will open this fall. So uh, this fall to have uh, before and after school uh, activities, and then next summer the summer camp they have there will also use the facility. Sounds like a much needed facility. Um, the Clove Apartments, 78th and Dodge, that used to be, uh, they tore down like an old motel, I think, and a village inn. Motel and a village inn. Um, yeah, it really looks neat. It's a, a pretty substantial structure. You're driving down Dodge, it's done really nice with uh, brick and rock, and uh, right next to the little fire station. Um, That's a $34 million project, yeah, a, it, four it, stories, and then they... They do kind of like a pedestal. That's the new thing is it's to save on – you don't have to get too much land if you're putting the parking underneath the, the – uh, Well, not only is it save land, apartments. but it's also an amenity to the renters that keep their car in with when this month where we have a, a severe thunderstorm every other day. It's a yeah, great, great yeah, feature to have. Absolutely. Keep it out of the floodplain too. Uh, that's 175 units. Uh, switching out to West Maple Road uh, at 183rd and Bill – Elk Parkway, you see this red structure, this this big steel structure, big piece of land, St. Patrick's Catholic Church. Um, that seems like quite a project. Yeah, so their current location's on 204th and Maple, uh, and they're just outgrowing the facility, and so they're building. They don't. They're landlocked there. They don't have any more room. They're building this new church and parish hall on. Uh, it's like 186 of Maple. It's called Big Elk Parkway, but basically it's 186th Street. The um, Costco, there's been a lot of rumors that, that Sam's was going to go out there. I'm not sure they're going out there. Now, last I heard, they're not, but it would make sense for them to try to compete. Costco at 180th and West Maple Road looks like it's enclosed, and, and uh, it's really um, going fast. I think that's opening up in, like, July, isn't it? Yeah, it's on. they announced it on their website, the exact opening time. But, uh, you know, those warehouse, once they get them enclosed – you know, it's not. There's not a lot of interior finishes that need to be done, so they go pretty quick. So that's our third Costco in Omaha, and um, then uh, back to to Dodge Street, uh, Bankers Trust Company. Uh, Sam Mosser, who runs that bank, um, 192nd and West Dodge Road on the southwest uh, corner. It's an Iowa-based bank. It's been in Omaha for over 15 years. Tell us about that facility. Well, yeah, thanks for uh, getting me the information from them. Uh, I was having a little a little bit of problem finding, a lot of times I find information pretty easily on these projects, but that one was a little tricky. But they were very nice and uh, uh, provide us with information. Uh, they, like you said, have been in Omaha for 15 years. I didn't know that, but they're, they have an office out there at the First National Business Park on 144th and Dodge. And this will be their first full-service retail location with all the typical banking features, tellers, drive through lanes, ATMs. And that's right, right by that MD1 uh, in that Avenue 1 district um, right there on 192nd. Uh, heading east on Dodge, uh, there was a lot of talk about this, but uh, over by uh, Shields, uh, Cheddar's. There's a Cheddar's at L Street Marketplace that's been there probably for 10 years or so, and uh, Cheddar's builds a really nice building, and they have uh, pretty good average food as far as I'm mm -hmm. concerned. But uh, tell us about that. Uh, it's just like you said, in Shields parking lot, just straight north of the uh, movie theater or straight east of Firebirds. 
Uh, second location, I don't know too much to say about it other than it's a popular restaurant. It's it's very popular. I go to Firebirds all the time, but I, I know a lot of people go to Cheddar's. They probably won't be one of my sponsors for a while, but um, it's a uh, it'll be a nice facility. One project that we get a lot of calls on uh, over at Hartwood Preserve, the old Boys Town property. There's this massive, it's, it's actually at 144th and Dewey you covered, it's a giant concrete structure. And people want to know if it's, uh, if, if it's uh, the military or what's going on over there. So the part they're building now is a five-story parking garage. And it actually, the parking garage, you won't see when the project is done because the apartment building will then be built around the outside of the parking garage, hiding it in the middle. It's very similar to what Broadmoor did on the south side of center, just east of Exarban Village. Uh, the the one thing that they did say is this location, besides having a lot of similar features, will have more amenities than the Exarban. The uh, yeah, Broadmoor does it builds an excellent project. They've got thousands and thousands of apartments. They've been in Omaha for decades, and and uh, they always do a great job. Um, the last project I want to uh, touch on before the break is Seventy um, Second Dodge. That structure, you know, the topping off ceremony we talked about last week, yeah. uh, Omaha Central Library. Give us an update on that. Uh, so what I said in the video is that the the building, the renderings looked neat. You know, it looked like a neat, cool library. But when you drive by that in person, that building is so much bigger than I ever pictured from seeing those renderings. The, Everybody says that. It is huge. No, I, I, I'm excited to see that. It's going to be more than, than books, obviously, and it's, it's going to be very interactive. And I think it'll be a great social meeting spot. And, and uh, kudos to all the stakeholders on that. Well, it's time to take our final break. When we come back, we're going to have the uh, lightning round sponsored by Perkins Kreitzer Construction. And uh, you're listening to Brad Williams and Trenton Maggot. We'll be right back uh, in a few minutes right here on KFAB 1110. And welcome back to the Grow Ma Show. I am Trenton Maggot, joined by uh, Brad Williams. And uh, Jeff Beals will join us again next week. He is at his son's graduation. Congratulations once, once again, Jack. Uh, we talked about the... Um, Brad Williams Grow Omaha construction video. You can see those right at growomaha.com. Just go to the construction videos and uh, you'll see all the action packed. And you can go and see a few years of those. So figure out what's going on in Omaha. Um, it is time for the lightning round brought to you by Perkins Kreitzer Construction. Perkins Kreitzer Construction, you can see them at p cconstruction.com. Uh, Dave Kreitzer does an amazing job of running that. Uh, organizations. Uh, uh, it is a full service class A general contractor based here in Omaha that serves Omaha, Lincoln, Council Bluffs, and numerous cities around here. Um, they have experienced construction team of project managers, project administrators, superintendents, carpenters, laborers, many of their 30 or with over 30 years of experience in the industry. If you want to see whether it's retail, education, religious, industrial, financial, restaurants, you can see a lot of their work at the newly envisioned um, Miracle Hills Shopping Center on the west side of 114th um, north of Dodge Street. It really, have you seen that lately? It, they really cleaned that up. Yeah, it's after sitting vacant for so long, it really looks great. And I uh, can't wait to see what they're going to do with the Boston Market Building. you got FedEx over there. and um, they. The, I, I met with them, and they said they have a a great idea or a great lead or something, but they couldn't tell me any information. So that's all right. But but yeah. it, they've they've definitely cleaned up the neighborhood, and that was a, that was a long time coming. So thank you to uh, uh, Perkins Kreitzer Construction, and uh, this is your lightning round. Well, if you ever wondered what to do with a basement at uh, if you're in uh, Dundee, forty nine seventeen Underwood Avenue next to Good Looking. Uh, there's a strip center and Duck Duck Bottle Shop, a combination uh, bottle shop, a bookstore, and outdoor bar is coming soon uh, to Dundee. Uh, the shop will host a handful of spirits and non-alcoholic botanicals. I didn't know you could drink those. Amongst books and, I and other ideas, all on a rotating menu of cocktails that can be enjoyed in the backyard. So check them out. Have you ever heard of Foling Warehouse? Foling Warehouse? We've talked about it for a few years. Um, there's a friend of ours um, that uh, that bought a franchise um, 
It is a 50,000 square foot space, bowling rhymes with bowling. It's a mashup between football and bowling. It is scheduled to uh, open in mid-July, just two blocks north of 50th and Fort Street. The space will have 30 lanes of foaling, two full bars, and dedicated me meeting space. The foaling warehouse can accommodate individuals, families, companies, outings, and uh, large events. Our friend Mark Wolf, we wish him the best of luck on Omaha's first foaling warehouse. Now I've seen every sport and every entertainment known to man uh, offered in Omaha. Yeah, it's it's really cool. But I mean, you go to some of these places and they're a lot of fun, and families and kids love them. And you know, like for work outings, they're a lot of fun to do different things too. You know, I've always said we need more coffee shops and we need more coffee shop chains. Moon Hollow Coffee has officially opened uh, an Omaha location at 5102 North 156th Street near Fort. The coffee lounge drive through existing location is in Blair at 1406 Washington Street. Are you a fan of Wahlburgers? I've never had a Wahlburger. I like them in, uh, in Las Vegas, especially after a night of drinking, or at least people around me are drinking. I was um, going to say, They've you? officially <laughs> opened... Uh, I've never had a beer with Brad. Well, maybe I have. Um, Wahlburgers has officially opened inside the High V at 3410 North 50, 156th Street, uh, near Crumble Cookie and Smoking Goat. The fast casual chain now has seven Omaha locations um, in High V's. I've been to the one at um, the world's largest High V out on uh, uh, out on 192nd and 370. Highway 370. Yeah. Um, there's soon to be one coming to the one at 132nd and Dodge as well. Well, the second location of Chard uh, Burger has officially opened at Southport, over right across the street where uh, Smash uh, Park is going. And, and Chard does a great job. Um, it'll be open that strip center right next to um, right next to uh, Panda Express and Jersey Mike's. Yep, and yep, and Starbucks and all of those. Um, let's pick one more. Uh, Westwood Plaza. Vive Le Rock, the latest uh, tenant in Westwood Plaza opened. It is described as a rock-themed lounge offering your favorite cocktails in a rock-tastic atmosphere. So we have to check that out. Yeah, that sounds like fun, too. Well, Brad, I want to thank you, and I want to thank uh, Mark Bowder for being on the show today. And you're listening to Brad Williams' Trenton Maggot on Grow Omaha. We'll see you next week. If you like this video, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And remember, Grow Omaha is not just media. This is a mission. We are trying to build up Omaha and make it an even better place. We can only do that with your help. Share this video with your friends, neighbors, and family.